read in the book of Acts, the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 10 and verse 1. Acts chapter 10 and verse 1. There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, the centurion of the band called the Italian band, devout man and one that feared God with all his house, who gave much alms to the people and prayed to God always. He saw in a vision evidently about the ninth hour of the day an angel of God coming to him and saying unto him, Cornelius. And when he looked on him, he was afraid and said, What is it, Lord? And he said unto him, Thy prayers and thine arms are come up for a memorial before God. And now send men to Joppa and call for one Simon, whose surname is Peter. He lodges with one Simon a tanner, whose house is by the seaside. He shall tell thee what thou oughtest to do. When the angel who spake unto Cornelius was departed, he called two of his household servants and a devout soldier of them that waited on him continually. And when he had declared all these things unto them, he sent them to Joppa. On the morrow as they went on their journey, and drew nigh unto the city, Peter went up upon the housetop to pray about the sixth hour. And he became very hungry and would have eaten, but while they made him, they made ready, he fell into a trance, and saw heaven opened, and a certain vessel descending unto him, as it had been a great sheet knit at the four corners, and let down to the earth, wherein were all manner of four-footed beasts of the earth, and wild beasts, and creeping things, and fowls of the air. And there came a voice to him, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. Peter said, Not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. The voice spake unto him again the second time, What God hath sent, that call not thou come. This was done right, and the vessel was received up again into heaven. Now while Peter doubted in himself what this vision which he had seen should mean, behold, the men who were sent from Cornelius had made inquiry for Simon's house and stood before the gate and called and asked whether Simon, who was surnamed Peter, were lodged there. While Peter thought on the vision, the Spirit said unto him, Behold, three men seek thee. Arise therefore, and get thee down and go with them, doubting nothing, for I have sent them. Then Peter went down to the men who were sent unto him from Cornelius, and said, Behold, I am he whom ye seek. What is the cause wherefore ye are come? And he said, Cornelius, the centurion, a just man, and one that feareth God, and of good report among all the nations of the Jews, was warned from God by an holy angel to send for thee into his house, and to hear words of him. Then called he them in and lodged them, and on the morrow Peter went away with them, and certain brethren from Joppa accompanied him. And the morrow after they entered into Caesarea, and Cornelius waited for them, and had called together his kinsmen and near friends. And as Peter was coming in, Cornelius met him and fell down at his feet and worshipped him. Peter took him up, saying, Stand up, I myself also am a man. And as he talked with him, he went in and found many that were come together. And he said unto them, Ye know how that it is an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company or come unto one of another nation. But God hath showed me that I should not call any man common or unclean. Therefore came I unto you without gainsaying as soon as I was sent for. I ask therefore for what intent ye have sent for me. Cornelius said, Four days ago, I was fasting until this hour, and at the ninth hour I prayed in my house, and behold, a man stood before me in bright clothing and said, Cornelius, thy prayer is heard, and thine arms are had in remembrance in the sight of God. Send therefore to John, and call hither Simon, whose surname is Peter. He is lodged in the house of one Simon a tanner by the seaside, who, when he cometh, shall speak unto thee. Immediately, therefore, I sent to thee, and thou hast well done that thou art come. 
Now therefore are we all here present before God to hear all things that are commanded thee of God. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. But in every nation he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. The word which God sent unto the children of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. That word I say ye know, which was published throughout all Judea, and began from Galilee after the baptism which John preached. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, and went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. And we are witnesses of all things which he did, both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem, whom they slew and hanged on a tree. Him God raised up the third day and showed him openly. Now to all the people, but not to all the people, but unto witnesses chosen before of God, even to us, who did eat and drink with him after he rose from the dead, and he commanded us to preach unto the people and to testify that it is he who was ordained of God to be the judge of quick and death. To him give all the prophets witness that through his name whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission of sin. While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Spirit fell on all them who heard the word. And they of the circumcision which believed were astonished as many as came with Peter because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Spirit. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Then answered Peter, Can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized, which have received the Holy Spirit as well as we? And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Then prayed they him to tarry certain days. And may God bless the reading. We now turn to verses 34 and 35 of Acts 10. Acts 10, the chapter we read in, and we read again verses 34 and 35. Then Peter opened his mouth and said of a truth, I perceive that God is no respecter of persons, but in every nation he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. And there are two things that we want to look at. Paul says that there is an identical basis of acceptance with God for all persons. There is an identical basis of acceptance with God for all passion. He does not receive this individual because of this or that thing and receives the other because of another thing or other thing. There is an identical basis of acceptance. And we want to see the character of that righteousness, secondly, of which the Apostle Peter speaks here. But in every nation he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. And we want to see the character of that righteousness. In case we might say that it is a righteousness of our own doing, one that would bypass Jesus Christ in his heaven, in his saving one, and that wouldn't do. Because we know when all is said and done that the teaching is summed up in who he is and what he has done and in the fruit of his suffering and suffering manifesting themselves in works of righteousness, in the life of the sinner of belief, so that there is no other name given under heaven among men by whom we must be saved but the name of Jesus. 
and a righteousness that is central <coughs> to this chapter. It's the righteousness that is of faith in Jesus Christ. Now, the words that we concentrate our thought on this evening with the help of God himself follow the are in the content of Peter's question where he said I ask therefore for what intent he have sent for me we read of the happenings of these days there Peter was sent for and Peter comes and he asks therefore for what intent he have sent for and Cornelius's reply now therefore are we all here present before God to hear all things that are commanded thee of God don't you like that we want the message of God from Peter. It wasn't a philosophical viewpoint. It wasn't a particular speculation in the light of reasoning that Peter could set in process as any individual can. It was the revelation of God that Cornelius wanted to grapple with. It was the word of God. And what we see here, we see the nature of preach. We see the nature of preach. God speaks to the Cornelius through the preaching of his word. And what we have here is that word is as Peter delivers it, God's revelation, what God has revealed, Peter is out to preach what God has revealed. So that we do well to follow in a dependence upon Him in His faithfulness as we seek understanding of God's command, of God's will for ourselves also. We follow the word of this revelation. We expand what is given to us already. That's the character of the preaching of the church of Jesus Christ. It's not a question of saying it's 1991. We must go with the times. God is very much going with the times. He, he is ahead of time. He has planned the door. There will come a time when he will set time as we know it aside and usher in a new heaven and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. And it is well with us that we are in step as we can by his grace and through the helpfulness of his Holy Spirit in our hearts. It is well for us that we are in step with him. That we set the Lord always before us. However much we fail in that intent, we look unto Jesus the author and finisher of our faith. The helper, the helper from beginning to end. Now we look firstly then at the identical basis of acceptance. Acceptance by God for all persons. We want to see God's attitude to people. It was a different attitude to the one at one time and indeed up until this time that Peter exercised. Because Peter had a difficulty. Yes, indeed, and we need not go into the much detail of it because we find the difficulty in a measure of controversy with Paul, who more clearly understood issues in the light of the mind of God. And Peter's difficulty that was that before God, he gave preference to the Jew, to Israel, to the Jew before the Gentile. He could see God blessing the Jew, Israel. And 
you could see the center of the data side. But oh Peter, isn't the gospel for the ten time as well? For the two. Well as the The very heart of the revelation. The very heart of the teaching of God to Abraham of old. Was it not to be the case that in him who was to come all the nations of the earth were to be blessed? of all nations. No. We will bring in some measure of right of merit of our own. That's where they made shipwreck. That's where they made shipwreck when the gospel of God's free grace was presented to them. Free grace. God's merit. They weren't born in sin. They were descendants of Abraham. They had a right to God in the light of who they were. In and of themselves. Oh, no. If you want the gospel on these terms, God is saying, you will pass me contemptuously by. Isn't that what Israel did? And isn't that that attitude of which they have not as yet hundreds of years later got over? Would you see Peter is taught differently to how Peter understood God's relationship to Jew and Gentile? That vision Peter kill and eat not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. What God hath cleansed that call not now come. He said unto them, Ye know how that it is an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company or come unto one of another nation, but God hath showed me that I should not call any man common or unclean. My gospel was one, all oh, the much of the Pharisee that we find in the heart of dear Peter, the end, don't we? My gospel, said Peter, says Peter to us is one in which he is speaking, I am holy, in which he is speaking in an attitude which says, I am holier than thou. I can't, I can't be part of who you are and what you are. God forbid that it should be that any longer. Oh no, it means that the gospel is for the Gentile as well as for the Jew. And it is his in the same way on the basis of free grace. On the basis of free grace. It does not mean that the knowledge of the gospel is not necessary to salvation. This is shown later on in the chapter, chapter, the same chapter, verse 43, Whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission of sins. The Jew and the Gentile, they were both sinners. They are both sinners. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Thou shalt call his name Jesus, but he will save his people from their sins. That's the point. Whosoever believeth in him, in him shall receive remission of sins. Whosoever is worthy of him shall receive remission of sins. No, no, no. Whosoever believeth. Believeth what? Believeth the truth as God presents the truth. The glorious free offer of the gospel. If you want me as Savior, you can have me as Savior. I have come to say, you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. That's the identical way there. And still, 
so that the works of righteousness that are spoken of here then Peter opened his mouth and said of a truth I perceive that God is no respecter of person but in every nation he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him so that the works of righteousness that are mentioned in our text in verse 35 are not the conditions that merit divine grace but the evidence of divine grace we have to be there if divine grace is present but they're not there to be understood in any meritorious sense as an evidence of the grace of God we must be there these without work is there if they're receiving work if they're receiving faith there are works of righteousness that follow God has saved us sinners and he has saved us to himself and to the knowledge of himself and to his love to an understanding of his love for us and to a response in love to him Jesus says if you love me keep my commandments do my bidding you see there are works of righteousness in which we die to what we did and come alive to what Jesus wants us to do. It's the character of the works of righteousness that are before us here. The person is not justified because of these works. But when these works are lacking, then the person is not acceptable to God. And these works are lacking. See, then the person is not acceptable to God. There is an evidence in the lack of works that the person has to come unto an acceptable standing before God. It's not a question of merit, it's a question of evidence. In other words, the faith that receives from God is the faith that is seen in work. Faith without works is dead. Now this faith is seen in the earnest desire to hear what God himself is saying. Peter speaks of the sincere milk of the word. Peter speaks of it later in his epistles. He wants those to whom he writes then and who reads his words still to receive the sincere milk of the word that they there and we here may grow grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ there is the desire here to hear all things that are commanded of God why? so that faith will be guided amongst other things in works of righteousness what will you what will you have me to do wasn't that sort of Tashus's response on the road to me when the Lord came into his life when he was met by Christ when he was bowed in glorious submission to him what would thou have me to do you see there's something wrong when in the name of Jesus there is a freedom to enter more fully into fellowship with him and his people through his word but the attitude is one of confrontation to that word what evidence of grace is that confrontation with the word of God oh no said Cornelius we want to hear all things that are commanded with God because it is Christ to opened up to him oh it, it assured him of that way of acceptance of the God who accepted by faith he that believed he that believed whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission of sin now what the verse says is that whatever is acceptable to God <clears throat> and we are shown what it is is as acceptable in one person experience as it is in another whether the person be true or 
not one way of salvation for the Jew, not another for the Gentile. There is an identical basis of acceptance wherever the person is, so that whosoever believeth in him in Christ shall receive the mission of sin. How can they? How can the teaching? Now let us look secondly at the character of this righteousness more fully. And Peter opened his mouth. We've been doing that in measure, but we want to see it more fully. The main thought initially was the identical nature of the way of acceptance. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth I perceive that God is no respecter of persons, but in every nation he that heareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. Now, the word that God spoke firstly, firstly to Israel, firstly to Israel, is a word that speaks of salvation through faith in Christ. That's why the souls of Tashas and the other found such a difficulty. Because they had got their teaching. Up to the coming of the gospel, they had got it all wrong. He had made it a Pharisaic He had made it the attitude of the elder brother against the mind of the younger brother. In the story of the When the younger would come in contrition of heart, acknowledging that he was no more no longer worthy to be called the son of that time. But the father of that house had another attitude. He was of other mind. My son who is lost. Has found. He who is dead is alive again. Oh yes, he must be the son of the man. You see, the mind of the true untutored found us a difficulty. And yet that elder brother had to come to an understanding of the love of the father heart in the same way in which the younger brother had come. He hadn't got it in him to avail himself of what was on offer to him at his help all the time. He found God with the administration of him. Indeed, Peter is coming out of that. And we see the importance of the word making clear who Jesus was, what he had done and was doing and would be doing in them and in others. And while sun and moon endure throughout our day and later, you see, we see this, we see this, the character of the righteousness that is before us here, even as it unfolds to us in the teaching of the word. We see it in Christ prayer to the Father in John's Gospel for instance where it where he says I have manifested thy name unto the men whom thou gavest me out of the world thine they were and thou gavest them to me and they have kept thy word how did you manifest their name the Father's name to them Lord he taught them through the word you see they have kept thy word what did they do in receiving the word the word of faith received him. They received him. For I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me. And they have received them. And they have known surely that I came out from thee. And they have believed that thou didst send me. Oh, they received the salvation of God. They received the Son of God as Savior. They received the word that he delivered to them. And they received the power of God and they are to be kept by the power of God. Keep through thy own name those whom thou hast given me. And they do, did that by way of a responsible receiver of that word and its testimony and its saving testimony. They believe. They believe. And receiving the words they received. You see, it wasn't a dead letter, it wasn't a pure letter, it was the word of faith. The faith related them to the person of the Savior. 
to the Father of the Savior. Truly our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. It is the word in which then Jesus Christ is present to them, offered to them, in which a particular righteousness becomes theirs in Him, offered to them, received by them, or sat, sadly on the part of some rejected, rejected, said no to. Maybe it is a word <clears throat> that bears testimony to a righteousness which is, which has to do with Jesus of Nazareth, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. And Peter says we are witnesses of all things which he did both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem whom they slew and hanged on a tree. He went about doing good. He was crucified. Did you see he find in glorious resurrection? Him God raised up the third day and showed him up openly. And he commanded us to preach unto the people and to testify that it is he who was ordained of God to be the judge of quick and death. To him all the prophets witness. And through his name whosoever believeth in him shall be seen. If you and I anticipate and or go back in our thoughts rather to the gospel and to the crucifixion and to the transfiguration, we have Moses and Elias, yes, the prophet. We have them with him on that mount of transfiguration as they talked of the death that he was to accomplish in Jerusalem. Why? Because they're standing in glory, resting upon that death and upon that righteousness which we arrived at. Oh, the captain of our salvation made perfect through something, and which they had received by faith. Which they had, which they had received by faith. And which was seen in works of righteousness in their lives as they looked oh yeah for a deliverer and for a city whose builder and the and maker was God now his great glory is that through his name whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission of sin this he commanded us to preach to the people the great blessing of the gospel is forgiveness of sin. Without shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness for sin. He was crucified, the righteous, for the unrighteous, to bring us to God. You see, this is the teaching that Cornelius needed to hear. And Cornelius needed to understand more truth. And Cornelius needed to enter into so that the character of that righteousness which is by death is understood and testified to and seen to be Christ's soul, God's soul, the righteousness of God by death. So that it is understood by Peter, by Cornelius, by all the, the rest as they grow in, a, in their understanding of who God is and what God is about through his word. That there is an identical way of acceptance with God, whether the person is pure or gentle. And that it is by way of Christ saving one. So that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life, and give evidence of that faith. In that character of faith, that one by love, that one is by love. There is an evidence given that faith is present in words of righteousness. In words of righteousness. And may God bless his own word.
to all our hearts. We sing in conclusion. Three and twenty-two. Hymn four hundred and twenty-two. Four two two. Jesus, the very thought of thee.